All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing measurement with C6 design and apply discontinuous measurement procedures, including interval recording and time sampling. So we've already covered continuous and discontinuous measurement. Now we're going to dive a little deeper and start to discuss specifics regarding measurement. And in this case, discontinuous measurement. As always, we're going to try to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. We've got a lot of exciting things coming, including more of our task list review. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you do pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So discontinuous measurement, starting there, records a sample of behavior during an observation period rather than every instance. Now, if you go back to our previous video, we went into detail about discontinuous measurement, so we're not going to rehash that idea, but just remember discontinuous measurement is looking at a sample of behavior. We're taking a long observation period, let's say 20 minutes, and we're breaking that into intervals. Let's say one minute intervals. So we'll have 20 one minute intervals. It's going to give us a sample of that behavior. And the three main types of discontinuous measurement include partial interval, whole interval, and momentary time sampling. And how we're going to remember these is through the use of this association. So partial interval recording is when the behavior occurs at any part of interval. Whole interval recording, behavior occurs the whole interval. And momentary time sampling, behavior occurs the moment the interval ends. So it's that straightforward. Each provides that estimate of behavior. How do we design discontinuous measurement? Well, first, you're going to want to create a definition and select a procedure. Remember, we choose measurement procedures based on the behavior's characteristics, our available time and resources, and our goals. What are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to increase the behavior, decrease the behavior? That is how we choose measurement. So we need a good definition of the behavior to be measured and also a good goal of what are we trying to accomplish? How is this measurement going to help us help the client? Once we have a procedure, we're going to determine the interval length. So depending on how long your observation is or how much time you have, that's going to determine the interval length. We also have to look at the behavior. Does it happen for a long time? periods of time continuously? Is it very sporadic? Interval length matters, and the shorter intervals tend to be more accurate, which we'll talk about a little more. You also want to know the observation duration. How long is your observation period? 30 minutes, an hour, 10 minutes? How much time do you have? How much time do you need to get a good picture of that behavior? Then you're going to make a data sheet. A lot of you probably use some sort of technology or app at this point. And so within that app, you need to have something ready for your technicians. And then finally, you're going to train observers, typically your technicians or paraprofessionals on understanding your measurement procedure and how you've designed it. So let's start with partial interval recording. This happens when a response is recorded. If the behavior occurs at any point or any part during the interval, even if it, was just, if it was just for a second. So if I have an interval that's 10 seconds long, if the behavior happens for two seconds, if the behavior happens for seven seconds, if the behavior happens for half a second, that will count in a partial interval recording system. Now a non-response is recorded if the response does not occur at all. And our final measure is the percentage of intervals in which the behavior was recorded. So if I have 10 total intervals and the behavior occurred 10, six times, that's going to be 60%. This is best for behaviors you want to decrease because we're looking for the behaviors to not occur at all. that do not occur for long durations and that occur at a moderate to high rate. If we have behaviors that are occurring for, for long durations, your data could become very skewed or tough to interpret because the bias of partial interval recording is it tends to overestimate total duration and rate of behavior. So you've got to keep that in mind that typically 
we're going to overestimate something about the behavior given the fact that it only has to happen for a split second. So going back to this example, if we have 10 intervals of one minute each, six times the behavior happened, but let's say the behavior only happened for a second of each, in, each interval. That behavior really only happens six seconds out of 10 minutes. Our behavior says 60%. That's kind of the issue with partial interval recording and discontinuous measurement, right? It has its place, but we have to know the drawbacks. So another example, hand flapping, interval is 10 seconds. Observer records a response if hand flapping occurs at any part of the 10 seconds. Whole interval recording. Observer records a response if the behavior occurred for the whole duration of the interval. So back to our 10 second example. Behavior has to occur the whole 10 seconds to be good. If the behavior happens this long, not good. If the behavior happens this long, not good. It's got to happen the whole 10 seconds. Now response is recorded if it does not occur the whole duration. Final measure, percentage of intervals in which the behavior was recorded. Again, so 2 out of 10 would be 20%. And our bias here is it underestimates total duration of behavior. So again, let's say we have 10 minutes of observation because we have 10 intervals. Let's say that the behavior happened for to be very clear, 59 seconds of each minute interval. Well, we're not going to count that, right? So our data show, well, it only happened, let's say, two minutes out of the 10, when in reality it happened a lot more. Again, just be mindful. Best for behaviors you want to increase because we want to see it happen that whole time. And that is sustained or continuous where duration is the concern. So example, on task behavior, interval is 30 seconds. Observer records a response when, if learner is on task for the whole 30 seconds. Finally, momentary time sampling. Back to our example. Observer records a response if the behavior occurs the moment the interval ends. So we're looking at the end of this interval, right? Right here. Yes or no. We're not worried about the rest of it. We're worried about right here, the very end. Non-response is recorded if the response does not occur at that exact moment. The observer is free to engage in other things while measuring. It's best for behaviors that are frequent or sustained because we don't want a behavior that doesn't happen often because the issue here is momentary sampling is already pretty, or not accurate, I should say, but pretty random because we're just literally looking up at the end of an interval. Is the behavior happening? Is it not? So if it's a very infrequent behavior, it's going to become very, very random. You can also use it for group behavior. That's our planned activity check or our play check. And so our example here is rocking in a chair. Interval is one minute. Observer records a response if learner is rocking at exactly one minute of each interval. So at the very end or the very moment, that interval ends. Okay, straightforward measurement ideas. Really, really understand those biases and the drawbacks. That's going to be very important for designing and picking what's important here. And think about what are we trying to accomplish. If you aren't subscribed, please do so. It really helps, and you get all of our updates. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out or card. Study hard. See you soon.